All right, our next presentation is Empowering Collaboration with the OSU Data Platform for Reservoir Modeling. Hello, uh, my name is Christine Rhodes. I am our AWS uh, Partner Segment Lead for Energy Data Platforms, and today we have with us... Uh, this is Priya Chaudhary. So I'm the Solution Architect from 47 Lining Hitachi Digital Services. And good morning, Kamim Sika, Aspentech, Seismic Interpreter, and representing the user in that story today. And we are very pleased to be sharing with you about the collaboration that our companies have done within the interoperability group to prove out the reservoir modeling DDMS uh, workflows. And we want to show with you today our process and our results. So if we can get started, uh, we're going to first look at the business cases uh, that we tried to prove out what those workflows looked like uh, using our drive data. And we will also be reviewing the configuration uh, that we used for our EDI lab test instance. And finally, we'll be looking at three demo videos to show you what we actually uh, produced, how we put it together, how it can look for you, and um, then wrap it up by talking about our interoperability objectives, goals, and uh, maybe a little call to action. So with that, let me pass it off. Yeah, I'll take you the clicker. Thanks. So here we are talking about the reservoir modeling workflow, so reservoir data. So we are moving from seismic to reservoir data. That's a lot of different type of data uh, that we are using for, for this workflow. So it's a little bit complicated on that side. And one very important aspect to that is that a lot of people uh, are using those reservoir data. So different data types, different people using the same data at the same time. Basically, it requires collaboration for sure. So we thought uh, we would work on a workflow that will demo how the reservoir DDMS can uh, work, uh, enable the work uh, with those reservoir data. And uh, the use case that we thought uh, we will consider for this workflow are the following ones. So the first uh, challenge that we have uh, for the reservoir modeling workflow is the fact that a lot of people and when we say different people, it's also different disciplines. And we heard about silos earlier this morning. So that's, again, d different silos that have to work uh, on the same data, on the same model. So to be efficient, how can we have the seismic interpreter, the modeler, the reservoir engineer working all together at the same time on the same data? Then the, the second aspect of it is that those different users those different silos, they may be do using different software, so it means it can be a multi-vendor ecosystem, and that's where OSDU is clearly uh, the solution. Finally, the collaboration can be uh, of different styles. So it can be different business units working on the same data, it can be different partners, so necessarily you need a permission system associated to that uh, collaboration environment. So this is while working. But then at the end, we also need a system that will enable you to search for the data, query the data, potentially reuse the data for a new project. So this is all we need to do with that reservoir DDMS. So with that, that's the workflow we've put in place. And we want to thank uh, everybody, so Marcus, Philippe, uh, Danny, uh, and Carl, from uh, Equinor, Total, Aspentech, and DGI to participate uh, to that uh, interop group and put in place that workflow. Um, so multi-vendor, uh, multi-operator, multi-domain, multi-everything, um, thanks to the interoperability uh, group lab. So we start uh, with uh, the collaboration of Equinor, who pushed the interpretation data in a data space. So here we are in the reservoir DDMS. So we push data into a data space. We can have different uh, data spaces. And we are using, here you can see the Volve data, set, data sets, so courtesy of Equino on that one. The interpretation data that has been published uh, by Equino will be reused in the total uh, system, so Sysmaj, to generate surfaces. Those surfaces will be reused in uh, SCUA by Aspentech to generate the model and properties, and those properties will be uh, then read by DGI. So we so said that we may want uh, to have a permission system associated to that collaborative environment, and that is one strength of uh, the reservoir DDMS, where we have the possibility to give different uh, permissions, so either viewer or owner, to the different uh, people working with the data. So 
quite easily, we can understand that one will be able to consume and ingest the data, whereas the other one will be able to consume it only. So solving some issues when it comes to different type of people uh, accessing the same data. So that's for one aspect of it, and I will leave it to Priya for the next one. Sure. So we'll move on to the next, uh, where we have all the data collaborated, and now the data is all ready. Once the data is all collaborated in the data space, we ingest the data into the OSDU data platform, and that can be done using the EDI. So you can see the, on the picture how EDI portal, data platform portal is used to ingest the data, and once the data is ingested into the OSDU data platform, we can use EDI search tool to search for the data, what we have ingested, and then also visualize the data, what you have ingested. And you'll see more of it as part of the demo. So here, let me move. Uh, this is the, how the overall system architecture works for this. So you can see on the left-hand side, you have a geophysicist who interacts with these different applications from s uh, uh, uh total energies, and uh, dynamic graphics, and uh, they have within, so they have different applications which can interact with the OSDU data platform. So within OSDU data platform, we have created, uh, like reserve, within Reservoir DDMS, we have created a dedicated data space, which is called face-to-face -face demo for the demo purposes. And this data space, uh, different applications can read and write the data to this data space. Once the data is all there on the reservoir DDMS data space, the next step is to now, how do you look for the data? Or how do the geoscientist or someone, once they have the data, what do we do? So to, do, to enable to uh, like use the data from the data platform or to enable the data catalog and uh, visualization, we have the EDI tool. But to make sure that happens smoothly, uh, like seamlessly, uh, there are some steps what we need to do, which is uh, ingest the manifest. So manifest in uh, building and ingestion is an important step because that helps you to establish the correlation between the data sitting on the reservoir DDMS and the core services. So using this, once you, the manifest is ingested, that can be done using the EDI manif ingest manifest tool, what we have as part of the EDI. Uh, Manifest ingestion takes around few minutes, and once the ingestion is manifest ingestion is successfully completed, you can use EDI uh, search tool to search for the data you have, what you have ingested, and uh, the EDI IQ is a new tool which is which supports the visual, visualization of the data. So, the, and you'll see the demo of it of how this overall thing works together. So, let me move on to the next one. Yeah, so for our next demonstrations overview, so we've got our first uh, video is going to be around the reservoir data interoperability using cross-vendor software and cross-domain, so really showing you how all those pieces are coming together. Our second video is going to look at the data search and visualization from our EDI portal. And the final demo presentation is going to be looking at our permissioning um, using the reservoir DDMS data space. So with that. Okay, so we are now looking at interfaces. We'll see the interfaces and we'll see how it works. Um, because I like to see boxes and arrows, but I prefer to see data in an interface. So, uh, as I said, we start uh, with Equinor, who had ingested uh, the, the interpretation data in the system. So here we are uh, with working with Aspen RMS. So you see the different types of data that were uh, in the project. We see well data with well markers. We see uh, horizons, so those are uh, two degrees that are available, as well as uh, false sticks that were interpreted uh, from, from the seismic. So those are uh, the initial data that we are working with. So those data, what we want to do is to ingest them in the RDDMS data space. So there are different ways uh, that, we can, uh, that we can work with uh, to do this ingestion. So 
We wanted to demo different ones, and the first one we want to uh, show here is a very simple one, which is if you want to export a RESTQML file, uh, you can then use that RESTQML file and use uh, the open ETP SSL client uh, that has been uh, delivered to uh, push and ingest the data to the data space. So you just set which data space you do it, um, and it will be ingested so here in our Evolve um, data set. So that if you don't have the ETP connector, so that's uh, uh, another way to do it. So here in that case, we'll see how with the ETP connector in Sysmage, uh, Total Energy is retrieving the data. So from the same um, data space, so the same data uh, will be uh, available. So we have metadata associated, so for those uh, who were able to see, we have the name, uh, the username of the people who generated the data. So we see uh, the well data, we see the faults, and uh, the horizons, so directly uh, pushed from uh, Aspen RMS, here available in Sysmage. Here we'll do uh, some surface uh, building, so we'll build the surface associated to this uh, interpretation. So that's uh, the result uh, on that side. Those surfaces, so here we are working with another data type, with surfaces, will ingest uh, the two surfaces to the same uh, workspace, so the face-to-face -face demo workspace, okay? Again, using the ETP connector. So now we have all the input data and the T surfaces which are available for everybody uh, accessing that data space. So we are now moving to Aspen Score. Uh, here on Aspen Tech side to connect again to the same uh, data space. So here we see how we do it uh, through SQUA. So we see how we connect to, uh, to SDU. And once we are connected to the data space, again, we see all the data available. So we have the possibility to filter the well data, the horizon, the faults, and we see the different type of uh, data that we have for each type uh, of data. So the for, it, for the horizon, we have the input and the surfaces for the faults as well, etc. So we can select the one we want to import. We don't have to select all of them, of course, uh, to build this time a model. So based on the surfaces that were generated uh, by Sysmage, and that we can we, uh, show here, we have uh, generated a model. So here, for the purpose of this video, we'll build a very quick model where we do the structural modeling, the grid building, the filling of the properties inside, all at once. That's uh, a very nice one, <laughs> quick one, shortcut, let's say, uh, where we have now an, a nice grid, uh, flow simulation grid, uh, with property inside, so it can be static and dynamic properties if you run uh, a reservoir simulation and you get, you retrieve the reservoir properties uh, for, from there. And those properties can then be uh, ingested to the data space. So those properties now will be available again for everybody. So in that case, that's uh, DGIs with govis 4 d uh, who is accessing the same data space, will see the same data and will visualize the properties which were generated in Aspen Square. So just loading the data. So we see the horizon first. Okay, so the well and the horizon, and now the grid with the properties. So the same properties than the one we, we just saw before. So here we have the possibility uh, to animate uh, the properties, uh, for instance, that were generated. Okay, so time series properties can be animated here. So we keep all that information uh, when we ingest uh, and retrieve the data from the reservoir DDMS. And just to close the loop, uh, we said that at the beginning it was Equinor, we imported the, the interpretation data. Of course, they can have a look at everything which has been done by all the other uh, partners, so coming back to Aspen RMS, connecting at the end to um, the face-to-face -face, uh, data space, face-to-face -face demo data space. They will have now access to uh, all the surfaces from Sysmage, the model from SCORE, and the properties, and will be able to visualize in Aspen RMS this time what uh, we were visualizing in Covis 4D on the DGI side. 
So that's how we can really enable collaboration, so different types of data, different types of users, um, different types of interfaces, uh, so multi-vendor, multi-operator uh, workflow here. So we can QC everything. So that's the QC of the surfaces that were generated based on the input that Equinor had pushed. The faults, uh, similarly, we can QC what has been done, and the model. So the grid, the pro simulation grid that can be uh, accessed and QC. And again, time series properties, so we can animate them in the viewer. So that's it uh, for the user side. I will now leave it with Priya for, for the other videos. So next when we see, yeah. So once the data is uh, there as part of the OSD data platform, we can use the EDI data platform portal to visualize the data and search. So this is how our EDI portal loads. So the user can start the inter, like uh, for uh, enter the user credentials to logging, and this is how the portal loads. There is a setting button where you can, user can manage the platform on and off status. So the, the, when there is no need of the platform, they can off it to avoid the charges, and they can also manage the list of users from the UI. They can add a user, disable a user or remove, a new, remove the user if, when they are not needed. So, so here now we are trying to load the manifest. So we are going to the manifest, loading the manifest then selecting the workflow we, since we want to do the OSD ingestion. And this is an example of how the manifest needs to be ingested. So using this example, the user can get an idea of how the manifest needs to load. So here I have created a manifest for the data space face-to-face -face demo. And uh, we will be ingesting that as part of this demo today. And we'll upload this new manifest using the upload button here. Once you upload, you get the uh, ID, run ID. And this run ID can be used to track uh, the ingestion status. Uh, so currently, as it, it shows the submitted and it takes few minutes to complete through the run. And once the data is, uh, ingestion is completed, you can query using the query search here. So I'm here querying for the four files which we have ingested. And we are trying to look into if it's part of now the OSD data platform. And you can see here the data set. What it was ingested is the face-to-face -face demo and then search for the specific files. So now using the EDI IQ tool, you can also visualize for the data set. So this is how the EDI IQ uh, looks. And this is we are trying to, as part of this, we are trying to visualize the four files, the horizons. This is a map viewer which gives you the location of the files uh, for the data sets, what you, we have ingested. So here we can look into where are the wells in the map viewer and then specifically looked at the fault and the horizons which we have added as part of the data space face-to-face -face demo. So this is, you can visualize some of the data here. Then in the interest of time, I'll move to the third demo. This is uh, similar what we have done, the visualization. Uh, let me move on to the third one. So here we'll see how the ACL uh, works. So we have uh, on the face-to-face -face demo, we have Spentech defined as the owner. And we have uh, total energies. They are just the viewer. So as a viewer permission, they cannot write the data into the data space. So here we see an Spentech application store being opened. And on the, you are, we are, what we are trying to do is uh, writing two, adding two new wells into the data space face-to-face -face demo. 
So, this is we ingested new wells in the face to face demo data space as you can see here we have imported and uh, now we can see the count to increase to the 22 and now uh, here the still the count is 20 for the new wells, but we will refresh uh, the connection and try to see after that it's after the exporting. <laughs> So, we will refresh the data space. So, this is now pulling the data from the OSDU data platform and we can see the two new wells what we have listed now becomes part of the face to face demo. So, this demo concludes that as a uh, owner you can read and write uh, on the data space with the specific ACL permissions. Now, we will see the total energy which has just the permission of a viewer. So, as a viewer they can just uh, they can just read, but they cannot write into the data space. So, they have the Seismus application which they have opened and they can, uh, they what they are trying to do is ingest a new horizon into this face to face demo. So, they are trying to connect to the OSDU data platform here and they get an error that they do not have a specific permissions because the ACL has been set up as and they just have the permission to view. So, that concludes the three demos. And yeah, uh, we'll, so we'll move on to the what were the benefits of what we saw through the presentation and the demo. So first is what we have seen is a cross data sharing and interoperability between all the different applications. Uh, how it worked across the reservoir DDMS data space. The next one was how using the standard interoperability. Uh, 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 SQML, uh, RESQML enables this collaboration of different data spaces. So, that was one uh, important thing which we see how the connection works between this multi vendor systems. The other one was the different data permissions for the AC, using the ACL data permission for the specific data space, how we can achieve, achieve the data governance, which is really critical. Uh, and the last part what we have seen was the a, uh, using the EDI, how it enables the search and the data visualization part. So, this gave us, this is an end to end workflow which enables us like how we started with the collaboration and then uh, all the how the data is can be visualized and search. So, how it concludes like this entire thing where you have different vendors talking to the same data space, you can have data governance established and then you can visualize the data and uh, it is available for the consumption. Yeah, with that, I think we already went through the slide, yeah. So, yeah, I would like to extend thanks to uh, but there are multiple contributors as part of this team who have made, made sure we are able to do this. So, would like to thank all the people and special thanks to Alice. She is not there today, but uh, she was a very critical uh, t a team member to make this happen. So, 